ladies and gentlemen, and movie lovers of all kind, and welcome back to the channel. As always, I am your host, Brett Murphy, and for today's video, it is going to be another godlike 2, not quite, which is essentially just my version of a tier list video. And for today's tier list, it is going to be every major The Lord of the Rings trilogy character. So back about a month or so ago in December, I released my Middle Earth ranking, which also included the Hobbit movies. Those characters will not be included on this list today, though. And seeing how I just did my Harry Potter vs. the Lord of the Rings cinema showdown and followed that up by doing a tier list video for all the Harry Potter characters, it only felt right to also do one for the Lord of the Rings characters. As I also said in my Harry Potter character tier list video, I try my best to gather every major character from this movie trilogy. So there was really no set criteria to get on this list. I just tried to gather all of the characters that I felt in some form or another had a stake in the plot or the overall journey of the trilogy. Meaning that they actually did something or were present enough to be considered a major character. I may have left a supporting character or two on the cutting room floor that you really liked and if that's the case then I apologize. But for today, this is going to be the list. Before I hop into the tier list, I just wanted to let you all know that I have an entire playlist dedicated to all of my godlike to not quite videos. So be sure to check that out and I guarantee you'll find something you like. And so without further ado, let's hop right into things. Okay, so as always with these godlike to not quite videos, I like to start off by going through my tiers just to clear up any sort of confusion there may be. I have named them differently from your traditional A, B, C, D tier just to make them a little more me. So, of course, the first one is your godlike, which is your god tier. That's as high as it goes, the best of the best of the best. After that, you have the awesome sauce tier replacing the A tier. Then you have the good as gold tier replacing the traditional B tier. You have quite all right replacing C, super meh replacing D, and then, of course, rock bottom replacing the F tier at the bottom of the barrel. So, yeah, let's get right into it. First character up on our list is, of course, Aragorn, and, I mean, come on, you already know. He's, of course, gotta go into the godlike tier. I mean, he is the king. The Return of the King is quite literally named after him. Arguably, probably the most important character, if not, like, the second most important character in the entire trilogy. Um, fun fact, as a kid, he was my favorite character, but back when I was a really little kid, I only knew him as Strider, not as Aragorn until I grew up a little bit, but nevertheless... He was my favorite character growing up. Now, over time, that slowly changed to a different character, which you'll find later on the list, but it doesn't change the fact that I absolutely love the character, and he's probably now my second or third favorite, no lower than that. Viggo Mortensen just perfectly embodied this character. Now, I know I've gone on record in previous videos and said that I do believe the movies are better than the books, and I stand by that. The books, to me, are just... A little too happy-go-lucky. Um, the movies are definitely far darker, far more serious, and the story is told at a much better pace, in my opinion. And Viggo Mortensen perfectly embodies this version of Aragorn, this more darker, more serious. You know, he's a ranger. This dude kills people, okay? He knows when to throw down. And, yeah, I just, I absolutely love the character, and I always have, and there's no doubt in my mind that he absolutely belongs in the godlike tier. Next is Arwen. Um... I'll throw her in the good as gold. She does absolutely have a place in this plot. Um, of course, she's the one that saves Frodo and the Fellowship. She is the love interest for Aragorn. And with all that, yes, that makes her a very important character. But that doesn't necessarily make her a great character. That's why she's in the good as gold character. I just don't really find, aside from those things, that she's an overly interesting personality in the grand greater scheme of things when it comes to this trilogy so i feel good as gold will suffice for arwen at this point bilbo baggins good as gold okay hear me out or er, maybe 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 you know you know what good as gold i like bilbo more now knowing his journey from the hobbit movies even if it's not the same actor of course but in the original trilogy, Bilbo really isn't in it all that much. He's in the opening portion of the Fellowship of the Ring, and then he appears later on, but then after that, he's very scarcely seen throughout the rest of the journey until the very, very end when he's basically dead. So, yeah, the character, I love the character of Bilbo, and I really do feel that the Hobbit films make the character even better. However, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, he's really not present all that much to really justify putting him any higher than the good is gold so he'll sit right next nice and comfortably to arwen um 
in this good as gold category. All right, next up is Boromir, and I'm actually gonna put Boromir in the awesome sauce. Now, I know that he is only in Fellowship, and of course, he meets his demise at the very end, but I mean, this dude, he goes through a pretty decent character arc in only one film. He goes from, you know, the brave soldier and the loyal son and whatnot, and then he transitions into becoming power hungry. Like, he wants the ring, he's giving into the temptation, and then he regrets it. And in the end, he sacrifices himself to save Merry and Pippin. So, I do love that little mini arc that he gets, even if it is just one movie. Plus, I love Sean Bean as an actor. And, of course, like the picture that I have here for the tier list, uh, one does not simply walk into Mordor. One of the most memeable moments, arguably, in film history. So, definitely deserves to be in the awesome sauce. Now we have Celeborn, and to be honest, I don't think he's a rock bottom character, but again, he's one of those characters that he kind of just pops up in and out a few times um, when you were in Rivendell and whatnot, and I just, you know, he's just one of the elves, right? He's kind of a background character, he doesn't really do a whole lot. Rock bottom is more so reserved for the characters that I genuinely don't like. Um, characters that I just don't care for at all or I find super annoying and I hate when they're on screen That's not the case with this guy So I don't think he really deserves to be in the rock bottom tier But you know, he doesn't really do much so I can't put him any higher Of course we have Denethor now um, Denethor will be in the rock bottom tier because again Great actor and he does a great job um, And I love the dude's voice He's got like just a very steely, cold, awesome, just sort of like grovelly voice He's great I'm pretty sure he's also the guy that voiced uh, Scarecrow in Batman Arkham Knight Which too, he did a great job in that As for a character though, he's a piece of garbage Now, there is a difference Actually, do I put him in rock bottom? You know what, I'll put him slightly above rock bottom because Rock Bottom, again, I have been known in my tier videos to praise characters that are incredibly hateful because that's just more of a testament to the actor or actress for really bringing the character to life and making the entire audience absolutely hate them. Like, it takes a lot of talent to be a villain or a lot of talent to have an entire audience hate you when they're supposed to hate you. There's a difference, right, for the Rock Bottom tier for characters that you hate because they're just awful characters and characters that you hate that you're meant to hate. That really, to me, is just a testament to the actor. So I'll bump him up just a little bit higher to Superman. Yes, he absolutely does have a stake in the plot. He is there throughout the journey. He does some questionable things. Uh, I'm not a big fan of watching him eat like grape tomatoes and super close up and things like that. Great actor, but at the same time too, the character, I, I don't love the character. And again, like, yes, he does do a few little things here and there, but overall, I just, I don't know. You know what I mean? It, it just, I, I can't, in my own mind, justify putting him any higher, but I also feel like he does deserve to be a bit above the rock bottom because I do really like the actor and I like his portrayal of the character, even if I don't love the character himself. Elrond. Look, I will put Elrond. I'll put him in awesome sauce, okay? I adore Hugo Weaving as an actor. He is one of the best villain actors out there, but this goes to show that he can also play a damn good hero. Elrond is not in the trilogy enough. The same thing as Boromir. He's not in the trilogy enough. If he were in the entire trilogy, he would absolutely be in the godlike tier. And I do love his presence, even if it's not everyone's favorite part. Um, his inclusion in the Hobbit trilogy, for instance, um, which I do feel does help you to see more of the character and does make you appreciate and like the character a little bit more. I love what we get to see of him in the trilogy. However, again, he's just not in the trilogy enough to quite be in this godlike tier. Right? Godlike again, best of the best. So Elrond, he gets close. Awesome sauce works for me when it comes to Lord Elrond. Now we have Eomer. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I could be way off on that. Eomer, um, good as gold. He's one of those characters that I think he's a total badass. And also because I love Carl Urban as an actor and pretty much everything this dude's in even if the movie's bad something like I don't know the 2005 Doom movie I love Carl Urban in it I love him as Judge Dredd I love him as Bones in the Star Trek like rebooted trilogy I loved him in Thor Ragnarok I just think the dude's great and then of course The Boys one of my favorite shows going right now arguably one of my favorite shows of all time um, yeah, I just love Carl Urban as an actor. This character, he kind of just pops in and out when it's convenient for, like, the battle scenes and things like that. Um, he's not one of the best characters in the trilogy, but my love for Carl Urban, even if the wig doesn't really suit him, the beard looks great, the wig not so much. Um, good as gold, works for me for Eomer. And then we have Eowyn. Um, again, hoping I'm pronouncing those right. You know what? She goes in the awesome sauce tier because she does get more screen time than Eomer. 
And, of course, you have that badass moment where she kills the Witch King of Angmar with the I am no man and the helmet reveal and the stab in the face. She's awesome. She's a badass character. I just love this character because she's not just like your typical damsel in distress in these like medieval movies and shows and things like that. She sneaks into the army for the final battle because she wants to fight alongside them. And she does. And she, like I said, she kills the Witch King of Angmar and stuff like that. So it's, she's a badass character. She really does develop into a really awesome character. She was interesting enough with her little like back and forth with Aragorn and things like that. Or Aragorn, sorry. Um, but yeah, it, you know what I mean? So she definitely is an interesting enough character. But it's just, I probably would have put her in good as gold. But she gets bumped up that extra little bit for the, you know, I am no man line. So, awesome. Faramir good as gold just a little bit below his brother even though we do get more of him i think i don't know if anyone's ever compared their screen times to which one had more or not it might actually be a little bit equal um he's just a bit of a dick in the beginning and then he does eventually develop into a far more trusting and likable character i think great performance don't get me wrong um and then but he just doesn't really do much in return of the king right he has that battle scene and then like we think he's dead and oh he's alive and i'm gonna burn him and things like that yeah you know how it goes if you're a fan of the trilogy but i just don't think he was quite as likable as sean bean as boromir so he gets bumped down ever so slightly however i do still really like the character i just wish that he was given more to do that's the thing i'll say a lot of because obviously the focus is on like the fellowship and the main things going on a lot of these characters do get a fair bit of screen time but maybe not quite enough to put them you know, up in the awesome sauce or godlike tier, so on and so forth. Frodo, look, uh, same thing I said with Harry Potter in my Harry Potter character tier list. I don't know what it is going around nowadays on the internet that everyone thinks it's like cool to hate on like the main hero, the chosen one or whatever in these like giant film franchises. I, I don't know why people are always like, oh, why are they always the most boring characters? Like Harry Potter is the most boring character. Frodo is the worst or Luke Skywalker. Is so blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't understand that. I love all of them. Luke Skywalker, Harry Potter, Frodo, almost all of the leads in any of these major franchises. I love them, and Frodo's no different. Sure, sometimes he can be a bit of a baby, but you have to understand that, again, if you, I mean, if you are a fan of the trilogy, you do understand. But, like, that ring is poisoning his mind. That's why he becomes so whiny and so unbearable at points, because he is quite literally having his mind poisoned by the thing that's burning a ring in his chest. You know, so cut the guy some slack. Of course, Elijah Wood, love the guy. Absolutely love him. Uh, from what I've seen in interviews and press tours and things like that, I love him as an actor, and I love him as Frodo, and I love Frodo as a character. So, yeah. Galadriel, she's the first one I'll put in quite all right. Yeah, she does absolutely play an important part in the trilogy with the information that she provides, and she's just kind of like one of these all-knowing characters and things like that. Um, of course, love Kate Blanchett and stuff like that, but the she just doesn't really have a ton to do. Like, she has her little spiel where she turns all, like, negative color and things like that in the Fellowship of the Ring, but aside from that, she's just not really given a whole lot to do. She kind of just pops in here and there every now and again, and just when she needs, like, information, she's almost like an exposition machine, really, so actress great character very powerful kind of like the all-knowing type of character but does she really have a ton to do no not really next up is a little character called gambling um honestly i had a struggle even remembering this guy's name i know that he is in it and he's with king theoden and things like that throughout his time on screen but he's just I don't, I don't think I could even recite a single line that he says. Does he even have a line in the trilogy? I hardly even remember. I do include him because he is very present. And again, I apologize if I missed another character that you really like, that you felt deserved a spot on this list. However, he is in the trilogy enough for me to put him on the list, but I just don't really remember or care to remember much about the character at all so is he a rock bottom character no not necessarily like i said that's reserved for the characters that do absolutely nothing or are just plain hateful for all the wrong reasons or just unbelievably annoying i don't know if honestly any of these characters are gonna end up down there gandalf or gandalf that's like a big thing i guess gandalf gandalf i call him gandalf um ian mckellen sir ian mckellen as Gandalf is probably one of my top five to top three best casting choices of all time. Um, throughout this trilogy, throughout the Hobbit trilogy, he is Gandalf through and through. The perfect casting choice, perfectly embodies the character, just perfect all the way through. Whether he's Gandalf the Grey or Gandalf the White, whether he's just 
passing on wise words while smoking his pipe, telling tales, his fireworks, or just being an awesome badass dude by taking down a Balrog, or being there in Minas Tirith in the heat of the battle, leading the troops when they need it. Gandalf is just an incredible character, Sir Ian McKellen an incredible actor, you put the two together and you have quite literally what is perfection in my mind. Gimli, another one of course going straight up, love the character, he adds the most comedic splash to the entire trilogy, he is just endlessly hilarious, and then of course he is an angry dwarf and he is an absolute monster with that axe and does some real damage, okay, so Gimli absolutely deserving to be in the godlike tier as well not only is he a badass but he's hilarious and that is a winning combo in my mind Gollum, aka smeagol whichever you prefer to call him andy circus falls into those well first off i think he's the king the master of mocap he really did bring motion capture characters into the mainstream whether it is Gollum, or it is king kong or it is caesar or it is snoke or any other character that he has played he's just the master at his craft Smeagol, aka Gollum, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy was like the first time that a fully motion capture character was so accepted and felt so alive and felt so real and the character of Gollum, aka Smeagol himself is one of the most interesting characters in the entire Middle Earth saga, in all of the Middle Earth lore. I mean, the dude is getting his own game. The game is literally called the Lord of the Rings Gollum. That is how great this character is. Andy Serkis is one of those actors that I feel anything he's in is automatically better because he's in it, and Gollum is no different. Then we have this ugly looking dude here, uh, Goth, Mog, Goth, Rog, whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, sorry, I, I lied. There definitely is going to be a character or two in Rock Bottom. He's just an orc that we focus on an extra little bit. Um, he kind of leads the charge in The Return of the King, and that's pretty much all he does he doesn't really do much else um i find it's hilarious that they say that they modeled the makeup and the character after harvey weinstein it is very suitable very you know fitting but as a character he's just an orc that we focus on an extra little bit and that's pretty much it if you ask me uh haldir i'll put him up here quite all right with good old galadriel um the character Nothing when I see him really comes to mind about like why I should love him, why I should put him higher, why I should dislike him. The main thing that I remember is that he pops in and out a little bit and then he's there at the Battle of Helm's Deep and then Aragorn is very affected when he finally falls in battle, not Aragorn, Haldir. Um, the actor I think is great. I know him mostly from Spartacus. Spartacus is one of my favorite shows, so I love him in that. I don't love him in this, but I do like the actor a fair bit and the character... Although his death didn't necessarily, like, emotionally move me, it does affect the characters that I do care about, so it did move me in that sense, I guess. So I think quite alright works for him. Uh, Isildur. Screw this dude. Honestly. Rock bottom for him, too. One, we just don't get much of the character at all. Like, literally nothing. Like, it's pretty much just, like, the, ex like, the exposition dump in the beginning of the movie to set up the plot for the rest of the trilogy. Um... This guy, I know that his mind was corrupted by the ring, but come on. He was a greedy asshole. He died. And if it wasn't for him being immediately corrupted by the power of the ring, because again, this was just like just after the battle. This wasn't like way later. The Lord of the Rings trilogy wouldn't have happened. Now, of course, I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy. My favorite movie trilogy of all time. But in terms of like these characters in this world, like do you know how many lives would have been saved? This dude would have just immediately thrown the ring into the fire of Mount Doom so many lives so because he's a dick and because he killed so many people or got so many people killed he ends up in the rock bottom king theoden absolutely in the awesome sauce i love the transition i love how a character that we'll see later on in the list worm tongue poisoned his mind made him this evil vile grimy ugly character and then when he comes to and worm tail is banished kicked out and things like that his mind gets cleared he immediately is this just brave badass leader and i love him in the battle of helms deep and i love him leading the charge i get so fired up when he is screaming chanting death getting all of his troops with the score roaring in your ears for that final battle of the return of the king i'm getting goosebumps now i don't know if you can see them or not my favorite moment probably in the entire trilogy or definitely among them and this is the man that delivered it so awesome sauce definitely befitting of that legolas of course 
Look, I don't love them in the Hobbit trilogy or anything like that, and that's why we're not doing the Hobbit trilogy. Maybe I'll look at doing the Hobbit trilogy down the line at some point. This is just strictly the Lord of the Rings, not Middle Earth as a whole. Maybe I'll do a full Middle Earth one at some point. Uh, but right now, it's just the Lord of the Rings. Legolas in the Lord of the Rings, however, is a phenomenal character. Orlando Bloom, he really does sort of it really does a good job at embodying this sort of he's kind of an asshole in the beginning i'm not gonna lie okay he's very um about himself he's very narcissistic he thinks he's the best he's you know no one can beat him he's he's just perfect essentially he sees himself as perfect as flawless as the perfect warrior as the perfect person and then throughout the trilogy mostly because of his friendship with Gimli when they're like their two races are sworn enemies that's what really just makes him this more down-to-earth likable lovable character so Legolas godlike for sure alerts uh, which sounds like something that like comes out of your mouth when it's not supposed to um Again, just an angry orc, one that we were Uruk from the uruk -hai. Um, We focus on him an extra little bit because I guess they put a little bit of extra makeup on him and made him an important character. He's the one that kills Boromir, and um, aside from that, yeah, he's just, just one of those ugly dudes. I mean, the makeup is phenomenal, but yeah, he just, you know, he kills Boromir, so that's why he ends up down there. Then we have this guy here, which is Madrill. Don't remember much about him. Again, he pops up just like uh, gambling there right next to him. He pops in every now and again, says what he needs to say, and then he's back out. Is he a rock bottom character like those ones down at rock bottom? No, but super meh, not going any higher. Mary, Pippin, I'm putting them both up there right now because there are two peas in the pod. Mary and Pippin, they're hardly ever seen without each other. They are, aside from Gimli, or probably arguably a bit more, I don't know, it's even. But they are definitely a huge portion of the comedic relief throughout this trilogy. Not only that, but they are lovable characters. I just, I love how, I don't even know how to say it. I just, I love them. That's really it, okay? I love the dynamic between the characters. I love them as individuals and their dynamic with the other characters. I love just sort of their moral compass and how they add, like, humanity to this larger-than-life story. And then, of course, their real-life friendship. It's Billy Boyd and Dominic Monaghan. They're still, like, best buds now. I think they have, like, a podcast together and everything like that. So, the relationship on-screen and the relationship off-screen. I love them both. I love them as individuals on and off-screen. And I love their characters, so... Samwise Gamgee, if you didn't guess it already, you guessed it now. Samwise Gamgee is my favorite character of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, he is the backbone, okay? Sean Astin gave the performance of a lifetime, gave us probably among my favorite characters of all time, like top three. Love the performance from Sean Astin, love the character. He is the backbone of the Fellowship of the Ring. If it wasn't for this dude, quite literally, hoisting Frodo up on his back and carrying him into Mount Doom, everyone would have died. Literally everybody would have died if it wasn't for Samwise Gamgee. He is the hero of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He is the hero of Middle-earth. He is my hero. Love Samwise Gamgee. Sean Astin, bravo. He gave us one of the greatest characters of all time. And there you have it. Saruman, a bad guy actually going to godlike. Uh, not only is he a great character, but Sir Christopher Lee, rest in peace, one of the best actors of all time. This dude would take any role and make it something special. Saruman was nothing different. An amazing character. I know that he was pissed when Peter Jackson cut him out of the theatrical cut of Return of the King and the extended cut. We do get to see that gruesome death. Nevertheless, though, an amazing character, a very... Uh, how do I want to say it? He's just a character with more layers than I think a lot of people realize. He's not just kind of your standard bad guy. He definitely has motives. He plays up the bad guy very well, but then also he does, you know, there's more to it. And I think the Hobbit trilogy is another thing that does help that a little bit. So it's another shout out to the Hobbit trilogy for helping one of these characters again become a little bit more than they were in this trilogy. Of course, then you have Sauron. I mean, like, he's not rock bottom. I mean, where do you even put a character like this? This is the only time we see him in his physical form. Aside from that, he's just a giant floating flaming eye. Um, he has a few lines. Like, as a villain... God, it's so hard to place him. I'll put him... Okay, I think because he's the main villain, he doesn't deserve to be quite as low as Superman with those characters that don't really do anything. Or Rock Bottom, because he's not a Rock Bottom villain. One of the most iconic, well-known, recognized villains of all time. It's a giant black tower with a bunch of points on it. And a giant floating flaming eye at the very top. However, aside from a few, like, really heavily modified lines and stuff like that, and then this flashback sequence in the beginning of the movie, 
doesn't really do much. He's a giant floating flaming eye. But we're told what he does in poisoning the minds of those of Middle-earth and raising the armies and we're trying to return to a physical form, regain the ring of power, you know, the one ring and things like that and come back to his physical form to rule over Middle-earth. But we don't ever get to see that. He just stays a flaming giant floating eye above a tower. So there you have it. The Witch King of Angmar. I'll put him in super meh. Um, only because... You know what? I'll put him up with... I'll actually put him up with right next to Sauron there. Um, I put him there because I love his armor. I just love his look. That's really what it is. I love his look. I do think he's a badass villain. I love that weird dragon thing. I'm not sure what the actual name of it is that he rides on. He is incredibly intimidating. And I just, I love his look really is why I give him that. And he is an intimidating villain. So I do feel he deserves to be just a couple tiers above, uh, you know, good old Lurts and things like that. And his Hildor and those people that don't really do much, but have just like a few lines. So because of his look and his design alone and how intimidating of a villain he is and his death is awesome. Um, I'll put him in the quite all right here. Last, but certainly not least, actually probably least. Look, Wormtongue, he's a Weasley dirtbag piece of shit character. But again, that's all the more testament to the actor for bringing such an unlikable, hateful character to screen, to the screen and, and just bringing him to life better than arguably anyone else could i think brad dourif is a great actor i've seen him in the x files i love him and actually he's like my favorite part of the rob zombie rebooted halloween movies and again i don't think anyone else could have brought this character to life quite like him and as i've said numerous times already with villains i appreciate villains sometimes more than the main characters because I find it's a lot easier for an actor to be loved as a character when they're the hero and they're meant to be. They just got to be a little bit charismatic and things like that than it is to be hated. Now, again, there's a difference between being hated for the wrong reasons. If your character is annoying, if your just character is, I don't know, the lines are horrible. If the performance is bad, you're hating the character for the wrong reason. But if the performance is so good that you hate the character as a character, then they're doing their job. They're making you hate a character that's supposed to be hateful. He is Weasley, he is slimy, he is exactly what his name is. He is Worm Tongue. He is, looks like a worm and a tongue combined with that makeup and the greasy black hair and all the smudge all over his face and things like that. Great character, bravo to Brad Dorif for bringing him to life and making him as evil and vile and unlikable as humanly possible. Um, but that's it. That's all my characters for the Lord of the Rings trilogy that I will be covering for this video. Maybe at some point down the line, I will do a Hobbit character tier video similar to this. Or maybe one I'll do um, an entire Middle Earth one where I'll include like all of the dwarves and then like the younger and older version of Bilbo, Radagast, so on and so forth. But for today, just for the Lord of the Rings trilogy, these are the characters I have chosen. This is my tier list and uh, back to me. So that is all for today's video, folks. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with which tier I put each character in. While you're at it, feel free to let me know which tier you would have put each character in and which god like to not quite tier list video you'd like to see me do next. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more content, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that little bell icon. That way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And as always, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. And that's a wrap. Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you. And while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.